I've seen so many of you on your pre-posting consultations, but I've seen uh, as many again by visiting various posts overseas. Um, I, my most vivid memory as Governor General must probably be the first time I encountered a, a working post in full swing. Uh, we were mobilised not so long after uh, I started in the job to go off to the Netherlands when the first of our victims were to be repatriated out of the Ukraine. And uh, Neil uh, Mills, who was, uh, uh, of course, uh, retired from that job pretty much, but only been a very experienced diplomat, probably wasn't expecting that uh, such a huge drama would descend on The Hague. Uh, but, of course, Neil and all those at post handled it marvellously. It was such a sad time. But it was also very uplifting because it not only exemplified, but it epitomised the way our posts represent Australia. And with due love and, and uh, affection for all of the uh, ambassadors and high commissioners representing your countries here, tonight my remarks, of course, will be mainly towards the Australians who represent us so marvellously. This was a case in point. Uh, there we were in the elegant residence, but it was jammed to overflowing, not just with the diplomats who were posted to The Hague, not just with the diplomats who had rallied from other missions in Europe to help Neil and the team at that very hectic time, but it was full of federal police, uh, people from border protection, it had uh, military people there. Uh, there were extra consular staff who'd come from Australia. There were scientists who were there for the disaster victim identification task. The place was absolutely jam-packed. This was Neil's residence. And it was just a get together to sort of identify Team Australia. And it was just marvellous because it absolutely was a paradigm for the way in which our people overseas ring the changes, respond to the challenge, uh, fly that flag in all its necessary ways, represent our values. Uh, and here practically it was uh, suddenly inventing themselves into a, a sort of a, an agency that that post was never designed to be. And yet they did it superbly. Um, we marched around the the group, uh, providing our greetings. The Foreign Minister was there. She, as you would remember, had been engaged in shuttle diplomacy to, a, to and fro across Europe and across the Atlantic uh, non-stop. She was absolutely out on her feet, but she went round and spoke to every person there. And it was, to me, uh, a, an unforgettable lesson about the way in which our people um, jumped to attention. I, of course, wasn't absolutely uh, a novice in interacting with our missions because when I was sent off to Timor, um, I arrived there and is James Batley here? Where are you? Hello, Batters, how are you? <laughs> Plenty potentiary. Yes. He, <laughs> yes. He, uh, he saw a lot of me and he thought it was because I was assiduously uh, carrying favour with the, our diplomats. He had the only working toilet in Dili, mate, so... <laughs> but it was always lovely to see you. Uh, so here we have a plenitude of plenty potentiaries, an excess of excellencies, you're all here. And it is wonderful to have this opportunity. When Francis let me know that this was planned, I sort of hoped that I'd be invited to speak and I could perhaps convey back to you one of the great joys of the Governor Generalship. On those overseas visits which come along, there's been 22 different uh, nations visited in my couple in my three years. I have really benefited, relished, enjoyed, lapped up the great support and the wisdom of our ambassadors and high commissioners in these far-flung places.
It's been fantastic. What a learning experience for me at this venerable age to not only read the briefs and do the reading and have the consultations back here, but to arrive in post and to be told uh, how it's actually operating in the, in the country at the coalface. And it's not just, of course, the plenipotentiary. It's actually all those wonderful young people that, that they are, you are, leaders of some of our best and, and brightest, playing a mighty hand for Australia. And when you talk to these folks in Latin America or somewhere in Europe or in Asia, and you find out how long have you been in the Foreign Service, and they, they'll say, oh, yes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm experienced now, I've been eight months in. And, you know, uh, they have this marvellous career stretching in front of them. And they're being mentored and trained and applied to the wheel by their ambassador, their high commissioner, the deputy head of mission, and all the other experienced diplomats there. And what a learning experience for them. How sophisticated do they become? How worldly? Uh, you know, I'm very proud of my service background, but, you know, we're, military people are created as their nation's blunt instruments. And that's what they do very well. But to play for Australia as a diplomat is indeed to be an essential part of the national orchestra, applying national values and influences and protecting and promoting interests. I believe that the role of the offshore diplomat is a mighty one. And you know, you never feel more Australian than when you're uh, standing in the Australian Embassy in Paris or uh, you know, walking into Australia House on the Strand and you walk into that, in global terms, a microcosm, from our point of view, this island of Australia that has been transported to a far off place. You're very proud of your nation then. You're very proud of what they do. I can't really uh, tell you too much more before I move on to the fantastic other group, the ones that you always show me, that you never fail to introduce to me when I get to your place. And that is your locally employed staff. These folk who are citizens of the other nation, generally the nation where you're working, but they sort of adopt this Australian persona. You know, not to say that there's not the ordinary workplace pressures, but there is a veneer, or perhaps it's better than a veneer, it's, a, it's a, an ab absolute layer of their corpus which says they are honorary Australians. They do so much for us. It's enormously satisfying to talk to these folks and to see them well led by their Australian counterparts who, on the other hand, come and go. But I think on every occasion, uh, they look up to the Aussies as being professional, compassionate, good employers and good people to emulate. So that LES group is always a fantastic group. Uh, I've got the official secretary and the deputy official secretary here, as well as Pamela O'Grady, a long-term employee at Government House. We've got a, a pretty good Government House representation here. So I must hasten now to say my Government House colleagues and I are always so impressed by the work you and your staff do, not only to advance Australia's interests abroad, but what you do to support my duties overseas. So in those 22 visits to other places, uh, there have been 426 events that you've planned and put before me, and they've been marvellous. So I welcome you back home now, not for R&R, &R, but you might find a bit of time for that, but for this event, the opportunity this provides, the renewal, the interchange, the opportunity to uh, get updated on whatever is happening in the world of our international relationships. Uh, I thank you very much indeed for the support you've given to me so far and that which is in train two years to go and no doubt some more overseas visits for me. I don't think for Australia, during peacetime, there's a more important group of people promoting our interests than all of our diplomats who do it 
so unfailingly well, unflagging energy and with great professionalism. I envy you your further time in government service, service to Australia, and I look forward to meeting many more of you as I travel around and, of course, in the social time we have before us this evening. Thank you for what you do.